Hi, this is Rich Weekly, Borthorpe Electric. In this video, I want to show you how to download to a brand new controller. We're going to use a quantum controller in this example. So this would be a controller right out of the box. We already have the project. Maybe a controller has gone down on the plant floor. And so we need to uh, load the new project on the new processor and, and get it up and going. So in this case, I'm going to use this file name quantum 651.160. So let's say I know that's the project name. I would go file, open. Now the STU file is the operating file that uh, Unity uses all the time. Uh, really the best luck that you have, uh, especially if the files move around, is the STA file. So you can see that this quantum 65160, uh, this auto STA is, a, is an STAA is an archived file. So that's automatically created. Whenever you save an archive, it'll just be an STA file without the auto. So like this, in this example, Here's the M340 test auto, and a, or test one auto, and a test one. Well, this test one, what that means is, you know, somebody saved an archive, and I'll show you that uh, when we get online too. But so we're going to select this quantum 65160 because that's the one that went down, and that's the one that we have out of the box. So we're going to let it open that project. Okay, so we have the project, and we know that this is a recent backup of everything, and so we want to use that to get it up and running. So we're going to go to PLC. <clears throat> now we can save this. Okay. We're just going to get rid of that auto.stu. Yes, we can replace it. Okay, so now we have our project. We need to go find the controller. So in this case, we're hooked up uh, via USB. We can see on the bottom here that uh, we are offline right now, but we're set up to go Modbus Plus. Well, we're actually hooked up through a USB port, so I need to go under PLC. I am in standard mode, but I need to go to set address because we're going to use the USB port. So I need to change this to USB. And in this case, the default address when we use the USB on the Unity controllers is SYS, S-Y-S. So I set those, I set USB, I set it to SYS, and then this is important, I have this test connection box. If I don't get a good response back from this test connection, then I might as well forget trying to load the project onto the controller. So I always want to make sure I have a successful connection here. So I hit the test connection and we can see that it came back success successfully connected to current selected target. So that's the controller out of the box with the default address. So I say, okay, that's the one I want to use. We can see down here at the bottom it's changed to USB sys. So now I know that I'm pointing in the right direction. I can go ahead and connect. Okay. We see along the bottom that it's, it's different. In other words, it's saying the project I have loaded is different than what's on there. Well, yeah, this is just out of the box. There's no configuration on it. It's in a state like, that we call dim awareness. And there's no upload information, which means there's not a copy on the project because this controller is fresh out of the box. So that's fine. So I'm connected to it. Now my only option is to transfer the project to the PLC and that's what I want to do. <clears throat> now I have an option here to check this box PLC to run after transfer. In other words, it'll transfer the project up and then automatically start the processor. I'm going to go ahead and say that's what I want to do because we need to get back up and running. I'm going to say transfer. It's going to transfer that information confirm the project is in run. Okay. So we're still hooked up to the controller. It's up and running and it's got the new project. Okay. And it's downloaded a backup copy as well. So uh, if I disconnect 
You'll see when I reconnect that we're equal, it's running, and the, uh, there is upload information now. So that processor is ready to go in to the rack, or it may be in the rack already, but it's uh, that's all we need to do to get it back up and running again. We need to make sure that we have a current backup copy. And in this case, we say the Quantum 65160. Open up the SDA file, that's the archived file, and I said I was going to show you. Uh, in this case, if I want to save an archive, so whenever we back up, we want to save, it'll automatically save it as an STA file. So we always know that we have a current backup and, and the STA, the archive file, is the easy one that we can email around to somebody else or store on the corporate drive or, or you know whatever we need to do. So uh, that's all we need to do to get a controller out of dim awareness. In this case, we're using a quantum but uh, there's pretty well the same steps with any of the Unity processors. Thank you.